Tennis Preacher, the Prophet, the Psychic, and the Pastor. Is the Magic Man, the Tennis Preacher, the Prophet, and the Tennis Psychic. And don't y'all forget that Tennis Pastor coming back at you again with another video. People, this is complicated. It's complicated. I'm talking about the Australian Open uh, Women's Final. Kvitova, Petra Kvitova, Kvitova uh, against Naomi Osaka is complicated, people. Now, you may be saying, uh, Magic Man, what are you really saying? Why are you saying it's complicated? Well, let, let me just say this here. From, from the Kvitova side, it's not complicated, okay? I'm going to get to why it's complicated when I analyze Naomi Osaka. So let's talk about Kvitova. That's pretty well straightforward. Kvitova is playing at probably her highest level right now, high super level. Kvitova, two-time Grand Slam champion. Uh, Kvitova, uh, she got her game back. We know she fell off. I won't go through all that stuff. Y'all can go read about that in uh, Wikipedia. Those of you who don't know about Kvitova's career, but we know how good she can be. Kvitova has a unique left-handed game. She got a high, very high tennis IQ. Uh, Kvitova, not only does she have a crafty, very crafty strategic left-handed game she got power see there COVID. so when she's playing at a high level man y'all so she beat collins six oh i mean and y'all know how well collins was playing the american and covid of a beat her so easily okay now so i think covid is going to bring her game i think she's going to bring her high level i think she's going to play naomi osaka the same way she played everybody else okay that's the covid side okay now i'm going to do that i've got to choose i'm going to make a prediction now at the end of the video but now let's do the Na naomi osaka side so you so that's the complicated side people and you may be saying well imagine man why is it so complicated just okay naomi osaka do you not feel she's going to bring her game okay people i do feel naomi osaka is going to bring uh a somewhat high level. I, I, I do believe that. I don't believe Naomi Osaka is going to get in there and collapse. She's already uh, won one major, which now, which now there is pressure now. Remember when she beat Serena people in the U.S. Open, she was free. Even Serena Williams was like, how in the world can this girl be this free? And Naomi Osaka was toying with Serena Williams, man. At some, a lot of times, at many times in that U.S. Open, Naomi Osaka's level went way over Serena Williams' head because she was free. So, now this got to be why, I think, why I'm saying it's, this match is complicated for me to predict, okay? Because... After Naomi Osaka won the uh, U.S. Open, a month after that, when the when the Pan's uh, Pacific uh, uh, Asian Tour started, what was I think it was in the first uh, uh, Asian tournament. Naomi Osaka, I think she made it to the final, and she lost in the final. And y'all remember her her, tra her not trainer, her coach had to come down and. Naomi Osaka was saying something like she's uh, she's having a midlife crisis. She was starting to feel that pressure, and uh, and for like a couple a couple of weeks, Naomi Osaka sort of fell off. Okay, somebody can say that's normal, but she fell off that expectation that comes after you win a major, and especially when when people, fans, experts, everybody is saying Naomi Osaka is going to be close to the net Serena, or she's going to be great. So Naomi Osaka was feeling the pressure. Now, by the time, by the end of the year, though, Naomi Osaka, she was adjusting to the pressure. She, you could tell, she was taking deep breaths. And um, and and let me just fast forward to right now to the Australian Open. Naomi Osaka, even as of yesterday, when she uh when she won her match yesterday, Naomi Osaka, I saw her taking deep breaths. She understands it's about pressure. How you handle the pressure now, and that's great. Now, now, 
that's great that she already realized it's about the pressure. Like Pete Sampras said, when Pete Sampras uh, won his 13th major and broke the record, uh, became the first player player to win 13 majors, uh, and um, Pete Sampras was playing um, the Wimbledon against um, Patrick Rafter. And people, Patrick Rafter won the first set and he was up four to one in the tiebreaker of the second set against Sampras. And Sampras came back and won it. And Patrick Raptor said he got nervous and they asked Sampras about it. Sampras said it's about the nerves, how you handle the pressure. So now y'all see how great uh, the Djokovic is. Djokovic is of uh, the the Dow, how great Nadal is, how great Federer is. Woo! But and see, Naomi Osaka said something the other day. She was said, I was just trying not to get frustrated. And so you saw Naomi Osaka, she was shaking her body like this here. So she understands pressure. Okay. Now you may say, well, Magic Man, what is this? We understand that pressure has a lot to do with whether you win a major or not. But what is complicating this uh, for you? Okay, here's the deal, people. I do believe Naomi Osaka it's going to deal with the pressure 80%. Okay. But there's a 20%. See, I feel Kvitova. I think Kvitova is going to get in there in this play. I think Kvitova is happy to have her game back. I think Kvitova, she's already won twice, two majors. But I think Kvitova is happy to have her game back. And sort of like her, pers her personality, I think Kvitova is going to get in there and just play her game. Naomi Osaka, I do believe she's going to bring... A uh, 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 high level game somewhat But I don't know if Naomi Osaka This is where it gets complicated If she deal with the pressure 80% okay, I believe that will still be a good match But is dealing with the pressure 80% Is that enough To be a high level Convitable It may be somebody else That's the problem See, I be, now, now you may say well imagine man What does Naomi Osaka have to to do to be committed over there. Okay, this is what Naomi Osaka needs to do. She needs to be free. She needs to be like, you remember when she said uh, a couple days when she when she knew she was making it to the had made it to the final of the U.S. Open to play Serena. She said, "Oh, you're not Naomi Osaka, be acting silly, cute, silly. I mean, it's all right. It's cute, silly though." She said, "Oh, I'm so happy to play Serena. Oh, I love playing Serena." So she but so she got in there and whooped that ass. She was free now. If Naomi Osaka is thinking like, oh, I'm in my second major. Oh, my God. I'm playing Kvitova. Oh, I'm so happy to be in my second major. And I'm so happy to be playing Kvitova. And she's free. She'll beat Kvitova then. If she brings a high level. It'll still be a, listen, it'll still be a, a tough match. Because Kvitova is playing at such a high level. But, people, here's the deal. I'm not sure Naomi Osaka is going to be that free. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, there's different levels of freedom. See, like, I've seen this with Federer. I've seen Federer 80% free, where he's close to the Djokovic, but because he ain't totally free, he doesn't beat the Djokovic. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, I'm not saying Naomi Osaka is going to collapse under pressure. I think she's going to holler the pressure to a large extent, but it only takes a 10%. If you haven't dealt with that 10 or 15% of the pressure, that's enough that to make you lose against an opponent that's playing at a high level like Kvitova. You understand what I'm saying? See, if it was a lesser opponent, I think Naomi Osaka would probably win with no problem. I think, see, I think she got to be almost 100% free. And if she's not 100% free, she needs to free herself up in the first two games, the first game. Okay? So, now, now that I've said that, uh, now let me make my prediction now. Okay, now see now, let me just tell y'all. People, I'm going to take a risk here, a risk in this uh, prediction. Uh, now let me just say this. From a conventional, something that's telling me I should take Kvitova. Kvitova, I mean, this is a toss-up. It's This could go up either way. I just gave you an argument why it could go either way. Uh, conventional wisdom tells me Kvitova going to come in there, 
just run that same game, that game that beat Collins. Everybody thought Collins was so good. Kvitova showed everybody the American ain't that good. I beat Kvitova, beat her easy. It beat her relaxed, too. Kvitova got a relaxed game. It's a, she got an interesting game. When she's playing at a high level, it's a very well put together game. So y'all see, I'm not, I'm giving Kvitova a lot of credit for her greatness in the game. Okay, so I could easily take Kvitova in this here, people. But you know what, people? <laughs> I got to throw a butt in there. I may get this wrong. I may get this wrong. I know Kvitova could win this. She's playing at a high level. I just hope that it's not some wop-sided match, though. Because y'all know how those women are. The women be tripping, man. Y'all see that, like, uh... Uh, Anissa Mova beat somebody, beat Kerber or somebody, said so. Then she'll come back and got beat, said so. Uh, uh, Collins did the same thing. You know how those women do? The uh, one woman uh, beat one woman, six oh six one. Then the same woman that beat that woman, six oh six one, she'll get beat, six oh six one, the next around. And you be like, what's up? All that up and down stuff, man, I hope this ain't no up and down match. I mean, I want to see, we want to know who's better be between Kvitova and Naomi Osaka. We don't want to see somebody, we, I don't want to see, I don't think it's going to be that way. I don't think, I don't see Kvitova beat Naomi Osaka 6 2 I hope not. And I don't see Naomi Osaka beating Kvitova 6-1, 6, one, six two or some crazy wop sided stuff. So I think it's going to be a good match, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, hopefully. Now, let me tell y'all who I'm taking. I'm going to take Naomi Osaka to win this match. Okay, listen, I, I'm going to tell you why. Now, listen, I just told y'all Kvitova can win this. I mean, Kvitova got to, she's impressive, man. I'm a, okay, listen, man. I, listen. Now, somebody could say this is being biased, but it's not biased because it's a toss-up. So, a toss-up, I could go either way. The reason I'm taking Naomi Osaka, now, I may get this wrong, people. I think Naomi Osaka is great enough. I think she's going to be really, really great. And I think she's going to get in there and be like, man, here's my chance to get another one. Man, I'm going to get another one, man. I'm great. Now, if Naomi Osaka loses, and she could lose, that means that, now it doesn't mean she's not going to be great, but it means that she ain't great now the way I think she's great. It means that I'm giving her too much credit. I could be giving her too much credit, but I think she's going to get in there, take some deep breaths, keep this thing close, and if it gets a third set, maybe she can make Kvitova feel some pressure. Because maybe if it gets to be a third set now, now I know I said that Naomi Osaka going to be feeling more pressure. But if it gets to be a third set, maybe Kvitova, Kvitova will be like, why is this young girl still with me? I'm a two-time champion. She just got one major. So if it get a third set, Naomi Osaka makes sure she don't get too far behind in this match. She could pull this off. But I think Naomi Osaka, I like that she understands it's about pressure. It's about pressure. So you're going to see Naomi Osaka taking deep breaths. She could be like, doing all that stuff. And I think Naomi Osaka is going. This is a big match for her. See, Kvitova is like happy to have her game back. And she win another major, okay? She'll have three instead of two. For Naomi Osaka, this is important for her. And I think she'll be the first girl since like, I mean like in, I think like since 16 years or something, approximately 16 years, that's won uh, a major back-to-back. -back. People, that's hard to do. When you win your first major, I'm talking win your first major and then win the second major right after that. Okay. People, even like Federer, Federer, he won the Wimbledon. He didn't win the U.S. Open in 2003. He won Wimbledon in 2003. Didn't win the U.S. Open. Then he won the... 2004 Australian Open. Nadal the same thing. When Nadal won his French Open, he didn't win the next major. The Djokovic the same way. So if Naomi Osaka is, can do this, so y'all see, this is like, it's almost like, I hope I ain't um, uh, 
pushing this too far? And somebody would say, well, Magic Man, you sort of giving her some greatness. Well, no, not really. I'm saying, well, listen, okay, if she doesn't do it, that means I was wrong. She's not that great now. Now, she could be that great. I think she's that great now. She just needs to free up, and I think she's going to free up. So I'm picking Naomi Osaka to some way free up under all that pressure. She's going to be feeling tomorrow and be uh, Kvitova. Okay, will it be two sets? Will it be three? It'd probably be three. Okay, so I got Naomi Osaka beating Kvitova. This is going to be a great match. Let's hope it's a great match. And one thing about this match, people, I don't think these two players have a lot of haters. Like, I don't think, a lot, you, know how, you know how Federer got haters, the Dow got haters, Djokovic got haters, Serena Williams got haters. Uh, I think most people don't hate on Kvitova, and I don't really think people hate on Naomi Osaka. I think people, like, they have doubts about would she be as great as a Serena or something. That's, that's uh, irrational. But I don't think both of these girls have a lot of haters, though, so that's good, you know. Let's get, let's get down. Okay, people, I got Naomi Osaka. Like I said before, I could get this wrong. Kvitova is definitely a uh, great enough and good enough player to beat Naomi Osaka, but I think Naomi Osaka out the pressure thing that is all about freeing up and operating under the pressure tomorrow. Okay, people, tennis preacher, prophet, the psychic, signing off. Have a good man, tennis preacher, the prophet, the psychic, and the